Well, this is a spotlight, ses spotlight session for the Creative Music Production course. We do this course in association with the Sound Training College, who are based in Temple Bar. Um, key aspects of the Creative Music Production, unique access to professional commercial facilities in Temple Bar. We have three recording studios that are commercially uh, usable and industry standard. We have pods and we have all sorts of other facilities there. It's split across the two campuses, so opportunity to collaborate with IDT students. It's mostly in town at Temple Bar and around about one day a week in IDT, but we can talk about that further. The staff offer a unique balance of both industry and academic experience. Um, and we can talk a bit further about that as well. So. You've got the best of both worlds there. Practical learning in small groups, we always maintain that. And it's the creative use of technology. It's not just sort of technology for the sake of it. That's the basis of the course. So there's two pathways on the creative music production course. We have the music production pathway and the music practice pathway. Music production, learn about all aspects of recording studio software. Uh, spend time handing your skills in professional recording studio, cultural context about under the hood topics, how to work with artists, how to work with uh, with people, how to get the best performance out of them, all those soft skills. Uh, shared modules from the practice pathway with cutting edge production topics such as audio production for games. And the entry to get into the production pathway is a portfolio or a short essay. We'll talk about that in a little while. The other pathway is the music practice pathway. It's new and unique. It's uh, fourth year, I think, we've been running this. Uh, develop performance skills while also learning about production and creation of music and audio. Uh, music practice as opposed to music performance, enable performer to use technology creatively. Shared modules from production pathway with specific uh, performance and genre ensemble strands for the practice students. Entry is an audition, not a portfolio. And it's very friendly. It's not scary. It's uh, it's all it's all good there. Entry so CA points plus the portfolio or audition. The portfolio or audition can equal. You can get up to six hundred points, and we do give up to six hundred. So if you feel you're not going to maybe not get your CA points that you think you feel you should, you might still get um, a very high score with your portfolio or, or audition. Um, show an interest in and awareness in the course um, in in both those applications. So the production, it's an audio portfolio. It's two pieces. Try and demonstrate contrast. Maybe if you're into EDM, have something like that, then have something maybe a little bit more ambient. Provenance is important. We ask for a short description with each of the two audio pieces, and we need you to critique, to tell us about uh, what's going on, what we're hearing, what your involvement was, what you think works, what you think doesn't work. That's just as important as the actual audio itself. Now, as well as the two pieces of audio, there's also another option, which is a short essay. This is about a genre or an artist, and it's not, we don't want facts or figures, we want your opinion, how you feel about them. So it might be going into a concert hall and looking at the concert, you might talk about the acoustics of the venue before you go in, how the atmosphere uh, increases, how the tension increases, uh, what the set is like, what the musicians are like, what the lighting is like, uh, what you think works, what you think doesn't, all that kind of thing. Um, and it's an audition for practice, showcase creative musicianship on your instrument, about three minutes. You can have backing, you give us information beforehand about what backing you want. All genres are welcome, and all uh, uh, aspects of music are welcome as well. It's start of a, a conversation, so we talk to you about your 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 practice and where you are. It's a chance to give us a bit more information. Um, CSoundTraining.com. If you haven't looked at that site, there's lots of details there, and they have specific open days. We can view the facilities and talk about our course. And there you go. That's just there. And I guess we're at questions, so we'll stop presenting.
Okay, a question from Ellie there. Okay. So the question is, how much time do you spend on the IADD campus? Um, I'll answer that. That varies, depends on the year um, and even the semester. Uh, it, it And also depending on what the actual module you were doing. So it in the first year of the program, it's probably more like uh, a day, a week or so. Um, and uh, second year and third year is probably something similar to that. There are times though when you'd be in the ID campus a little bit more frequently, like in first year you'd spend a week in the TV studio, so you'd be in IADT for four or five days and you might spend a week uh, doing something with radio, so you'd be in the campus again four or five days. So it's not just continuing like the leaving cert, like you start in September and you do the same module all the way through, they, they're broken up a little bit. But yeah, the majority of the teaching happens now in the Sound Training College. Um, and uh, at the end again, yeah, and then into fourth year, it's probably even less in IADT, depending on what your final year piece of work, your project is uh, as well. Yep, that's it. Okay, and sorry, Ellie had the, uh, that was a question for, uh, Orla just put in through there. And then uh, Ellie, uh, you have a question there, you can type it into the chat or you can turn on your microphone. Uh, sorry, we actually, we have the microphone switched off for ah, the stickies. Um, yeah, you do. guys feel free throughout to just pop any questions you have into the chat. Any questions for our students? OK, yeah. And there's one. If you are applying to the practice pathways and if you are applying as a singer, is there an amount of experience you need? Um, not necessarily experience. We're not looking for grades. We would look at confidence and a sort of unique voice that you have in the way you sing, the way you perform. So. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one there. What do you think, girls? Yeah, I mean, I've never actually noticed, like, I mean, I've never actually thought of it from that point of view. I guess it's just like you just want to see a bit of a commitment to learning how to use your voice, I guess, more so than like, like knowledge on it, like willingness to learn about it more so than anything else, I guess, I'd say. Very good, yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's kind of the same as Kira did. And as well, I think you guys are probably looking for passion as well and just what you're doing and trying to get better at what you're doing, especially if singing or your voice is like your main instrument. Well put. You can just head off, Jeff. These guys seem to know all about it. Here we go. That's why they're here. Exactly. Um, what is... Uh, so what is your acceptance rate uh, of applications? Well, it's it's still through the CAO and so it does vary. So it's a combination of the portfolio or the audition and interview process together. So um, I wouldn't have the exact figures about how many people apply versus how many people um, uh, actually end up on the program. Um, but we are, it's a it's an in-demand program, which means that we are oversubscribed, which means that if we had more space, uh, there'd be more students there to take. So it is a little bit competitive in, in that regard. Um, we have grown over the last number of years. Uh, we used to be a smaller class size, but we're, we're a larger class size now, especially in first year. So um, there's not necessarily, uh, I don't think it's a good metric to talk about the acceptance rate. It's, it's more just to say that, um, there, it's a combination of the, these different elements that will get you in and showing your commitment and that the class sizes have actually grown um, as well. A lot, if not all of our applicants uh, would nearly be first uh, preferences. Um, so we get a lot of people who this is the their first preference that they'd like uh, to do. Yep, absolutely. So what are the minimum entry requirements when it comes to CAO points? So as Jeff said, it's a combination of the two. It's so if you can imagine 600 uh, or more, depending on if you're doing honours maths from the leaving cert and then 600 from the portfolio. So it's a combination of those two. So uh, last year I was just looking at it there. The points were seven for seven was the minimum. 
uh, points. So that would be a combination of the two. Um, it could be, so in theory, you could get 600 in the leaving and you could get 150 in the um, audition or vice versa. Uh, as long as you meet the minimum requirements there. Now that's the, the 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 very lowest part of the points, but the median points was in the average was more like nine hundred and seventy, which means that yeah yeah most people were coming in within points in the in the region of well I mean it would depend, but uh, at least uh, three hundred and seventy. But there are lower as well, you know. Um, it's just uh, it's that was the 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 average. And the minimum varies from year to year. So that's yeah. the last person that got on the course. So. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, OK, will there be more open days in the Sound Training College in Temple Bar? I believe so. I believe so. And let me have a quick check on their website for the date for you. I can get that for you in a second there. Languages such as Spanish, French, German required. No. Uh, if so, does that include Irish? No, you don't no. have to speak any of those. No, it's just English. It's all taught, taught through English. So there's no um, other language alternative there now. So it's just you just need to. Yeah, um, have a if you're a native English speaker, that's fine. But if you're coming from uh, another country, then you will need to have um, the appropriate English exam. I think you could refer to the IET website and admissions for the exact qualification if English wasn't your first language anyway. If you do, if you did speak these languages, it might be useful. Useful if you go on an Erasmus exchange in second year. There we go. Thanks, Orla, for putting in the minimum entry requirements. Uh, so Orla's put in the minimum entry requirements in terms of the matriculation. You, you know, this is to get into a um, IEDT in general. You need a maths, um, an ordinary six or H seven, English ordinary six or H seven, um, foundation levels. Maths is not accepted. Um, and you need two uh, H5s uh, uh, plus four or, uh, ordinary six or H7s anyway. So it's on. It's, that's all on the website. That's kind of, I think, the, the standard for a lot of IT programs for the minimum requirements anyway. I'm um, sorry, is there a passing mark for the portfolio, Jeff? Maybe you could take that for a sec. There isn't a passing mark. No, no, we just go from low to high on that one. Uh, just going back to minimum entry points, the foundation level maps, that's specific to our course. So. Yeah, sorry, yeah, that's right. There's there's a few programs with it, but yeah, it's not the entire IADT. It's like that. Sorry, yeah, you're right. Um, Are there guidelines how to maximise points for the portfolio? There's lots of tips and information. Uh, there's a portfolio booklet, which is a link to on the site. I'm I also welcome people to send me their portfolios and I give them feedback before they submit them. So you're welcome to do that. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting two or three every week at the moment. Um, generally, it's just try and stand out if you're sending audio in. Think of making it different from a vast sea of sort of, you know, stuff out there. Yeah, yeah. just to go just to go back to the sound training open days, they are intending to have another one and um, the date isn't fixed yet, but you can keep an eye on their website as well if you want to go in and uh, see the resources as well. Uh, and also, sorry, just to say, if you do get called for interview audition, they generally happen in the Sound Training College, so you can maybe have a little look around when you're when you're there. Um, so, uh, sorry, there's a question here. Since the course is between Temple Bar and IADC campuses, where would you recommend students find accommodation for the course? Would somewhere closer to Temple Bar be most convenient? Probably, yep. Difficult finding accommodation, full stop. So, yeah, that would that would make sense, I guess. What do you think, guys? Uh, just from experience, like from people that have been in every year anyway, a lot of people have said like obviously closer to town and stuff like that is much easier seeing as how you're in town more than you would be in Dunleary. Yep. Um, but obviously it's it's quite hard to find any accommodation in Dublin, let alone Dublin City. Mm. So it's mm. just a matter of kind of sussing it out really. And as well as the courses being in town at STC, there's also also sessions you, you might be working on or playing on or or doing or even your own projects. So they would be based in town as well. So that's another consideration. Also, and trans yeah, oh, sorry. transportation, I was about to yeah. say, yeah, like if you're near the N11 or the Dart line, both of them go to either college or close. That's, yeah, very good point, Jackie. The, the 46A is very frequent bus uh, on the N11 anyway, but still, yeah can be a pain. Okay, 
Is the course suitable for mature students? If so, is there a minimum quota set aside for these? It is very much uh, appropriate for mature students. We uh, have had quite a few go through the program. Um, is there a minimum set aside? Um, I'm not actually sure, uh, to be honest, which maybe Orla might have some information about that. We don't specifically in the program team set that aside, but I think there is um, uh, a certain uh, amount of applications which are put aside for alternative entry. So if you're coming through yeah. a different scheme, but I'm yeah. not specifically sure around the mature students. That's all part. That's all part of the process. So I couldn't give you a number or a percentage, but there is a number set aside. Yeah, and and look, we'd encourage it because mature students really add to the program in terms of you know they're usually engaged much earlier. Um, and they're there to get the qualification and get the experience. So the, the their work is uh, often very uh, uh, good and it, it helps with the class dynamic as well. So Jeff, when and where will the auditions be held? So when roughly do you have any sort of ideas? We don't have that yet. We have to fit that around various things like um, your mocks, for example, and stuff like that. So I can't give you dates for that. Um, but yeah. where, where will be the Sound Training College, I think? As yeah, far as they'll, I they'll be held in the Studio 2 in STC in town. Do the entry requirements differ for people with uh, diploma certificates coming from the European Union? OK, um, maybe we could get some help with that question. Well, I'm not 100% sure. So no. that would be a conversion uh, situation whereby you'd be maybe applying uh, as um, direct entry using like a level equivalent of level six, level seven, I'm not sure. Um, you would have to talk to the admissions office directly about that because maybe you might not be going through the, maybe you probably would be going through the CAO, but you yeah. might not be going through the same process. So there's there's a different um, uh, application process if you already have a qualification. So it again, usually, yeah, it, usually it, it always involves uh, talking to our ad admissions office and they do a, a backwards and forwards with you and ask you for your results and they sort of have a look at them and yeah that, that, that's a conversation okay. with um, them really can i ask what country possibly that might help uh manion just uh if it's if it's in italy okay so yeah no i was going to say if it was possibly um a country that we might have had uh, some experience with it might make it easier so i'm not 100 percent sure about the kind of the equivalency basically like what would that qualification equate to in the Irish system that is probably predetermined outside of our control by the national qualifications framework and you might have to have a word contact the admissions and see what process and, and if you are applicable as well maybe it's not a high enough qualification I'm not sure all of those things you, that's a direct conversation with someone in admissions that's it yeah is is there a word count requirement for the SAJ there is it's about 800 uh, sorry it's about a thousand words um, we're not particularly strict on that. Uh, you can go under or a little bit over if you want to express yourself a little bit further. That That's fine. And the, the word count for the descriptions uh, on the tracks is about 300 words. But one, once again, we're not particularly strict on that. So the next question I might uh, answer is, do we have Erasmus possibilities? So yes, there, Erasmus is uh, something that we uh, can facilitate. Um, do we have links with uh, certain colleges? So, for example, if you found an institute that would match up with our program and in second year you decided you wanted to go in Rasmus for um, a semester, we could facilitate that as long as it all matched up. Do we have a specific partner? We're working on that. Um, there's some suggestion we'll be working with uh, the University of Lusophona in Lisbon, so that could possibly be a, an Erasmus link. We have had some people go in Erasmus in the UK um in the past and one in italy i think jeff am i dreaming years ago no we had a italian students come well, out italian student came in or in erasmus not go out yeah no yeah. didn't nobody went out there so um it is feasible um it's something that we're trying to grow within the program but one of the things that it, it, and we can be led by the students so again if you find a really good program that you'd like to do erasmus and we could facilitate that well then that would be great but one of the problems that we find with the erasmus is um the program you're going into has to teach in english so uh, and since the uh, if you want to go to Spain or Italy or, you know, Germany or wherever, the program has to be taught in English or at least you have to speak the language from the country you're going to. Um, uh, so that that can be a challenge anyway. We've been yeah. looking at uh, Norway, Holland yeah. and, and as Connor said now, Lisbon. So we the association with uh, the UK had to finish because of Brexit. Yeah. yeah, that's where we are with that. 
So I see that. Thanks, Orla, for finding out there. 10% is held for mature students. So that, that's just to be yeah. clear. Yeah, OK. Um, and OK, does the here uh, Susie grant apply to this course? I know the Susie grant definitely does. Yeah, absolutely. This is on the CAO. This is uh, no additional fees beyond the standard uh, IADT programs are charged for this. Um, there is a materials studio fee, I think it's called now, which is about gaining access. It's around, I think it's 200 euro, 150 euro. Yep. 150 euro. So that is uh, around keeping the, uh, getting access to the studio facilities because they are professional studios. So that's a year. Um, so that's the only additional cost that you would see on uh, beyond any normal IADT program. 150 euro ish a year. So um, let's just keep going down through the questions. All right, there's some questions around the here. Yeah, OK, so yeah, we've got to the bottom of those questions there. Would anyone like to ask any other questions? Unless did I miss one? I don't think I did. Lots of information there for men on. Oh, so there are there uh, this year 11 places were offered to the here students in great music production. Very good. Yeah. What time would you be going in and out of the studio? I'll just I'll go to that one first. Um, guys, what do you what was your experience about getting access to the studio? What what's your day like, I suppose? I mean, I guess it kind of depends on the day and who else is in there and like Obviously, there's like it's not only students that use the studios as well, so it kind of just depends on if it's booked and things like that. But I mean, anytime, like nine times out of 10, you'll get studio time if you want it. So, I mean, it's easy, accessible and I mean, great fun. You know, anytime you're in there, you, like people are coming in and out wanting to see what you're working on or help you and things like that it's a good environment like yeah so as like the the studios are primarily given over for coursework but there is a scope to do some uh, personal work as well if there was a project you're working on and there's an arrangement that can happen with that as well uh, i see a question going back there ellie had a question how long has this course been running and what have the graduates gone on to do so i could be wrong how many years of graduates have we had jeff is it seven years of graduates well, I think it's eight. I think it's eight. Eight. Now. OK, so this is coming into our 12th year then um, since the, we had our very first years come in. Um, 12. Well, that sounds like a lot um, it's around that. So it's definitely over 10, 10 to 12 years it's been running in terms of what have our graduates gone on to do. So um, it, the, it really varies uh, because and, and it kind of follows a bit around some of the skills that we uh, work with our students and, and, and the soft skills. But I have, I have a certain list here that was provided to me. So. Some of the uh, places the students have gone on to, they've gone on to professional mixing and mastering studios. So that would be the kind of the, the output side of the uh, system. Um, audio post-production for film and video. We've had several graduates go with that. Uh, audio broadcasts, so for RTE. And uh, we've had people go into teaching as well. Uh, project management, so an animation studios with people working for brown bag. Um, audio startups. Uh, we've several who've gone on to master's programs as well, who've taken their fourth year and maybe done a research master's with us or possibly gone on to uh, another master's. Tech sort of stuff, audio coding, so making software. Um, and um, there's also then the transferable skills. Students have gone on to work in finance. Um, they've worked in Healthcare, we've with students doing an audiology program to try and uh, transfer to be an audiologist. Um, and uh, we also have had, we, I've started to keep track more and more in the last number of years. I've got a, a creative music production alumni group just to seeing how they're progressing. There's the, and I can say that every year there's a few jobs that come uh, to us directly, industry contacting us looking for our graduate tech firms as well, like Exhale, which are um, work with, um, audio content generation um so yeah it kind of varies a lot um and then anything anything i've missed out on jeff there no i think that covers it very well i just would would say that the soft skills which is learning how to work in groups how to pre present to other people how to work with artists uh, all that stuff is crucial and that's what people are seeking out in in, in the workforce these days Absolutely. large companies especially 
And here's one for you, Jeff. Um, how does collaboration work between students in the course? Or maybe through the guys, I don't know. Yeah, within the course, there's small groups that do projects and in the guys major projects in third year and the professional projects in fourth year, they might work with with people in their own class. They might work with people at, outside the class. So there's lots of collaboration. There's collaboration in third year. Our third year students do all the sound for the graduating animation students. So that's a specific one there. So there's, there's all sorts of other stuff going on. The balance between practical and theory work. Guys, would you like to talk about that? Um, I guess it kind of depends on whether you're in the production or the practice pathway, I guess, mm. as well. That's a big factor. But all in all, like it's kind of 50 50, but maybe not for the practice or the production pathway, depending on the year. But I mean, you kind of you do get a lot of practice work in no matter what. Um, like you, like a lot of the time as well in first and second year, you'd have you'd have a lecture and then you'd go to the lab afterwards, and like so, it's kind of it's really well balanced. So if you're someone who likes to learn hands on as well, that's kind of a, a really good thing. So yeah, I I think theory isn't the best way to put it because if you're learning something that isn't practical, it still relates to something that is practical. So it's it's looking digging a little bit deeper into subjects. So I think that that's probably the best way to look at it. We we don't teach stuff purely for the for the point of teaching it, you know. Yeah, and actually, uh, we did have exams, a few exams in the program, mm, but I they're believe all they're all gone now. So yep. it's. Uh, yeah, and then the other thing, maybe we'll just go back to one question because I think it was quite good. Maybe we asked the guys. So maybe from the the students perspective, how does collaboration work between the students? Does anyone have any kind of comments on that? That's kind of a nice question. How, how do you work together? I think we're often like sometimes we're given a choice, like, you know, there's a certain project where it's like you can work together if you want to. And then you and your friend might have a great idea for the assignment and, and working together or sometimes it's mandatory to work together or it's it's really encouraged and it's like um it's de it's definitely something that's encouraged in every assignment like you know, you can work together with someone or you can do this with someone and uh it just is a good space to to learn how to collaborate properly yeah i think Very especially good. as well between because we have the practice pathway and the production pathway you've got like so many like ranges of skills between the students so it kind of is vital like working together and kind of like showing each other's strengths so like you can have loads of session musicians and then people in the studios doing the production and mixing as well so like it's not just one person doing everything or it also can be that depending on what you want to do hmm. Yep. And also for things like we do a lot of like programming and and a lot of kind of technical stuff and some students are stronger than other and that kind of stuff and they, they help each other out and there's a lot of peer teaching and that kind of stuff and peer learning. It's like a quite a, quite a big part of it, I find. Very good, yeah. How, how, much, yes, how, sorry, much, contact, how much contact time between tutors per week? A lot. Um, wouldn't you say, Connor? And that tends to go down as we get into third and fourth year where people are sort of self-motivated working on their own projects. Yeah, I just had a look through the kind of uh, hours, like how many hours a week do students have contact? And like it depends dep on what style, of, uh, what stage we're at. So in different in first and second and third, and it's different if you're focusing on one module. Like, so there's times where you would just be doing an awful lot around one module. And there's times where you're kind of doing several modules. So it really ranges between somewhere in the region of 10 to 15 hours. OK, and it can go down a little bit depending on when you're a final project, because there's a lot of autonomy, uh, autonomy to work on your own to get through the project with support, um, weekly support. But in, say, for example, somewhere where Kira now is in her final semester, so there'd be less contact time. But a first year and uh, maybe second year might have a little bit more, depending. Um, OK. Uh, CAO deadline is by the 1st of February, but when is the deadline for submission of portfolios? 20th of March, Jeff has written down there, so I think that's right, is it? Yep. Cool, cool. How, who and how do I contact for a review of my audio tracks before uploading them for the portfolio? You can send them to me. So my oh. email address is at the bottom of the site, the IADT Creative Music Production site. Okay. Do the students who pick creative music production and uh, creative music practice still work closely alongside each other? Yeah, 
yeah, it's supposed to be collaborative. That's the whole plan. A lot of the modules are similar uh, at the start, and then there's a bit of diversion as you as you go through the program. But ideally, the hope is that the practice students would be the musicians that the production students could collaborate with. Um, I mean, that doesn't always happen because the timelines and everything. But the the uh, the hope is uh, and the intention is that there'd be lots of collaboration. I, does that from our two um, uh, practice uh, pathway students? Is, would you find that there's a lot of collaboration or working along with the production students? Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of relates back to the previous question as well about collaboration, like. College work aside, you're alongside a lot of people your own age that have a similar interest and want to do the same thing, which is like write and record music and release music. So you have a lot of people that are coming to you outside of class time going, I'm working on a personal project would you do this for me? And like, you have a lot of like outside collaboration as well. But in regards to like the different pathways, like you also get like, there's certain projects in, I remember there was one in second year for sure, where the production students were working in the studio. And we, as the practice students were like the client in the studio, like being the people that were being recorded. So um, that was pretty cool as well. So very good. Yeah, thank you, Kira. One uh, question for the music produ production pathway: Can you submit both options, essay and detailed statement for pieces? No, you can't. It's one or the other. It's a short essay on an artist's genre or movement, or it's the two pieces of audio with the descriptions accompanying them. Um, is there a recommended level that you have to be at for auditions in terms of playing instruments, like uh, being a grade five bassist, uh, for example? Um, strictly no, no. Um, we'd assume that you have some competency of the instrument and you're bringing something to the party. You're, you're bringing something to us and you're excited about how your what your relationship is with your voice or your instrument and you're going to show that to us so we couldn't we could say it's 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 in a grade five or six but strictly speaking no any more questions there folks i think i i, I think we're up to date with the questions there Give you a minute or two. What do you prioritize most when reviewing portfolios, Jeff? Yeah, it's a good question. We prioritize uh, awareness. We prioritize ownership of the tracks, for example. So we're not looking for perfect tracks. We people we certainly don't want people to have, have them mastered or anything. We want people to know to be able to be aware of what they're giving us going. Well, you know, I think this bit works really well because I could, you know, I could do this I, I, if I had a string quartet, if I had someone else to sing it or someone to play drums would have done this better. So an awareness, a self critique, I guess, of what you're giving, what you're giving us. Um, it's kind of subjective, as someone pointed out at Open Day the other day, the other day, but it's rigorous as well. You mentioned no exams, is that correct? Yeah, in terms, in terms of sitting in a room with 40 people and handed out the exam paper and given two hours. Yeah, that's correct. We have removed those. We did have them for a few years and not not across all modules, but in some modules. So they're all gone, uh, but there is still assessment. There's plenty of assessment. There are projects, there are presentations, there are recordings to do, uh, artifacts to create, um, like uh, there's an awful lot of work. OK, just because there's no exam doesn't make it easier. It, it, it actually means that you have to work. Um, you can't cram, shall we say, towards the end. You have to be working kind of a little bit more consistently. Um, yep. Yeah. Oh, just I'm sorry. One thing about the exams. Yeah, there is no exams, but there might be an open book test in one or two modules. I remember it's just like an online test that you might have to do again. I think you might have a few days to do it rather than sitting in the halls. So there's no there. So I mean, that sort of assessment does happen in I think two or two modules at the moment still, not necessarily all just. Project based or presentation based.
Okay. We. Any keep them coming, folks. Questions, guys. Oh, there we are. Yeah. In relation to creative music production, is there any uh, complications when it comes to work, social life, and college work? <laughs> yeah. Um. Is there any complications that uh, the we would always uh, prior ask students to prioritize the college work? Yep. Uh, um. I mean, that's be the standard answer for that, to be honest with you. Um, there is sometimes where the two might cross over. So, for example, um, there might be a gig being run as part of the program, which might turn into a social event post the assessment. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'd ask people to prioritize their social, uh, sorry, their um, their college work. Although I do know, like, um, work has become a much more important thing, like working in a, a job um, to earn money than it had in the in the past few years because of the cost of living and paying rent and everything. So, you know, we 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 have to ask you to prioritize it because we'd always say that we're trying to get you a qualification, help you get a qualification so you can get a better job. But there are tensions be behind that, depending on how much you actually are um, required to work. So. Yeah, it, if, it, if, if you're working three or four days a week, it ain't going to happen. You're just going to cr crash and burn on the course. So it's It'll be challenging. Day. Yeah, unless it's the weekend. I mean, even the weekend, you'd still need a bit of time off. But um, yeah, midweek, I wouldn't. I would really try and avoid that during college time. It's very you can't be missing lectures regularly because we would always say attendance is linked to progression, which means if you come to class and you engage in the classes, the chances of passing those modules is very good. So um, the more you come in, the better chance you are to, of passing, to be honest with you. So if you're away working every Tuesday for a year and there's a class on the Tuesday, you're probably not going to pass that class. Saying that we've had people that have gone on tour with their band while they're at the course and we've we've done everything possible to sort of uh, facilitate that. But that's, you know, that's a sort of rare enough thing. It's only happened a few times. I have composed some beats, but I have also mixed music for artist friends of mine, uh, which is on Spotify. Uh, would you be more interested in what I have composed or would you like to hear the mixing work I have done? Combination of both that gives the contrast, I think. Maybe pick pick your best mix and your best uh, composition. Once again, you're welcome to send them to me. There's a couple other do questions ever work in professional projects with external clients kind of in fourth year. Um, you're certainly welcome to bring people in and work on your projects with you. So. But there's no specific work experience, for example, doing sessions like that. Yeah, well, actually, you're right, Jeff, in terms of session work, there's not. But there is scope in third year that's been brought in across the Institute that we do that's have a, a work placement alternative to a third year project. So, for example, if you were to arrange um, uh, with a company or outside uh, body that you were going to uh, be placed with them and you could work with them for three days a week for 13 weeks and um, doing a specific task around the, that fit in with the program, um, you could do that as a, uh, instead of um, a project in third year. There's a write up and a presentation and, and a diary and a journal that you have to keep. But it is a, it is a possibility. We don't have we don't see a large numbers doing it. You know, out of our 30 or 40 uh, third years, you're talking about seven people. Uh, take that up largely. It's it's, it's yeah. not it's not that big anyway. We do it for two years and it's very successful, though. They've 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 got a, a huge amount out of it. And some of them are still working part time with those people yep, with those that's, placements. So that's yeah. right. That's right. It works it's, well. it's, it's a good way to say that's right little yeah uh it was introduced last year and i jumped on it and it was really hard to get a place because of covid but i was i actually managed to get a placement with a production company and i was able to work on a festival with them and i got to work on the rt music choice awards as well last year so that's just an example of kind of one of the students who's done the placement option thanks lil uh, just out of curiosity, are any of the students' portfolios public? I'd love to get some inspiration from it. No, they're not. Um, so in the, the art course, for example, they can show you previous examples. Um, we don't do that because it's very, it varies from year to year and it's very sort of what people offer varies as well. It's not as sort of uh, clear cut, for example, as, as what you might be putting in an art portfolio. It's a good question, though. 
follow up with uh, the question uh, Arthur asked, is there uh, any uh, from the tutors? Uh, I presume you mean uh, as in mixing production on websites like YouTube and or Spotify? Yeah, Kieran has his own website. Um, Soft some sound, of, uh, is it? people do it. Yeah, some small, small tone. That's it. Yeah, that's what it's yeah. called. Um, our CVs, anyone that it comes from the IEDT side, our CV and our background is on the IEDT site. You can look at that as well. Yeah, so this guy here, this is Kieran uh, Lynch. He started with his last year. There's the link in the chat. That's his personal website of all the um, artists he's worked with in the last number of years. It's quite extensive. He has a Grammy, so that's pretty good. Or I mean, maybe people don't like Grammys, but there you go. Oh, actually, one thing, sorry, someone mentioned um, that I meant to bring up as well is based on that uh, collaboration project that Jeff was talking about. We actually, uh, our students won an award last year in the British Television Society Awards. Um, they did, they won for best sound for a short film. Some of the, uh, so one, uh, a group of students did the composition and the mixing for an animation and they, um, they did uh, uh, they did very well, so they beat out everyone basically in the UK and Ireland um, for that production. So that yep, was first... we've actually that's a big award, but we've had a few quite a few small awards in the same area with with, yeah. with that collaboration. It's a fantastic thing. Yeah, that's 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 about as big as it gets for a student project, really. Um... All right. Any more questions? Yeah, guys? and then we might sign off. So please be aware that the 1st of February is the submission date for CEO. Um, you can get up to 600 points in your portfolio. Um, there's lots of information in the portfolio booklet attached to the IDT site. You can send stuff to me as well. I'll give you some feedback on it. Um, Submission date, as we've put up, is the 20th of March for the portfolios. OK. Oh, it's just a couple more that just came in there, Jeff. Uh, okay. Are there any criteria we must meet for the auditions at all? Or what are you looking for while we perform from Rachel? Uh, what we're looking for is um, a level of engagement um, with your instrument, with your voice, as I said before. Um, you don't have to be up to a certain grade, but we would expect some sort of comp competency uh, with, with what you're doing. And we we want you to dazzle us. We want you to, you know, uh, show us what you got. Um, it might be a sort of the special, unique way that you're doing what, what you're doing, um, but it kind of sounds vague and sub subjective, but it, it'll make sense on the day. We're also part of that is a chance for you to talk to us and tell us about everything else that you're doing. If you work, if you're in a band, if you're working, you know, working in a theatre, all all that stuff. So, um, and then a few last questions here. How many people try to get into creative music production course every year? It varies. It varies. It's um. And it, I'm and usually like, looking, we're usually looking at around about 100 to 150 portfolios. Yeah. So maybe 100 to 90 to 120, 130 portfolios, that kind of area. Yeah. And this year there was, it was a bit of a jump in terms of um, intake. So that worked out at how many did we take in in first year, Jeff? Was it in the mid 50s anyway? So that sort of space between. It was the mid mid 60s actually, but we're hoping to that'll that'll be going down. But there was a few that was that was student, uh, students who deferred or you know um, repeated. I think it was new entries was in the yeah maybe less than 60 anyway. Hmm. Do, do you have to do auditions in person? No, you can uh, you can do it. You can send us a tape or a live link as well. We'll talk to you about that. Yeah. Closer to the day. Because we realise people have got stuff going on and they may not be able to come on that date. Um, saying that in mind, we have changed. We've, we do it over a couple of days and we vary those days depending on if people have 
something that's come up. Yeah, it's not just all like it'd be, it'd be too much to try and do all that in one day. There's a few sessions, absolutely. Mm. Let's do that. OK, we'll finish up soon enough, guys. If there are folks, if there's any last couple of questions just before we go. So if there's any more questions after this session, depending on what they are, if there's an admissions questions, you can contact IADT admissions directly um, uh, or you can contact myself or Jeff. And if you want to uh, get uh, in to see the Sound Training College, they'll be running another open day. I don't have a date. Just keep an eye on their web website, soundtraining.com. One um, question, are, are deferrals possible? So if something happens and you're accepted on you, the course, you, you can defer it for a year, yeah, if something yeah personal happens in your life or for whatever reason. Yeah, but it's, it's just to say uh, they're not guaranteed. So there's, you have to write no. a letter that maybe it's a medical reason, financial reason, something like that. They they are not, a deferral is not guaranteed. It's just. Um, I think I think they mean if they accept the course at the very beginning and they. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, it, yeah. So. so, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I don't have an exact date for the STC open day. I'm sorry, Owen. Um, I'm not sure if it's uh, actually been finalized um, they've already had two this year, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, Thanks you're actually quite welcome to get in touch, and they may they 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 might give you a very sort of exclusive tour by yourself. So yeah. get in touch and give it a go. Okay, there's Orla's wrapping us up as well. There, that's great. Um, okay, thanks, thanks to Jackie, Kira, and Lil for taking part of this. Really appreciate exactly. it, guys. Thank you very much, everyone. Worries, thank you. Bye bye. So thank you everyone for coming and thanks again for uh, taking your time to uh, answer all their questions. Um, if you have any further questions, you can shoot them to info at iadt.ie or um, Connor and Jeffrey, would you be okay with that? Yeah. Um, I yep. can direct you to them if you have any questions for info. Absolutely. All right. Thanks everyone. I'm going to finish now. I'm going to end the meeting. So. Thanks, Orla. Uh, have a good Thanks, evening. Everyone.